Hello Sue, welcome to the kitchen. Hey Paul, great to see you. Now today we are cooking penne with meatballs. Indeed we are. So let's go through the ingredients. So what do we have here? Great, so this is the, the penne. Yep. Uh, however, with a, a little bit of a twist, focus for me is a gluten-free pasta. Okay. So um, we're going to be using that today. Okay, sure. And we've got your own little Sue Shepherd red wine and Italian herbs pasta sauce here. That's correct. So that'll be the, the pasta sauce that once the meatballs we've made them up, we'll cook them away in. Mm -hmm. And we've got... That's uh, lean mince, so um, about 600 grams of, of beef mince. Equally, people could use um, a bit of veal mince if they liked. You can use this for chicken mince as well. So this recipe is really adaptable. And um, we've got here some garlic infused olive oil. Indeed, rather than using garlic and onion in the actual recipe, we're going to be using the garlic infused oil because this recipe is actually low FODMAP as well as being gluten free. I'm going to ask you about that in a few minutes as well. This is quite interesting. And we've also got here, obviously I know my herbs and I yes. think that would be basil, right? Well, it is. It's one of my favourite herbs yeah. and um, I, I love growing a herb garden so I try and make sure most of the recipes that I make have got some, some fresh herbs That'd in That'd be there. great. And we've got some cayenne pepper here. We do, rather than using chilli, I mm -hmm. like to use a little bit of cayenne, but equally chilli could be used. Brilliant, and of course pepper. Mm -hmm. um, we're using one egg today. With this amount of mince, we'll use actually just a little bit less than a whole egg, sure. but yep, we'll okay. be beating that up. And we've also got some um, pre-cooked rice here as well. That's mm -hmm. correct, yes. Yeah. So we'll use about half a cup in, in the recipe that sure. we're doing today. And lastly, we've got some parmesan cheese. Yes, we'll save some for a little sprinkle on top. Mm -hmm. However, the majority of what's there will actually be incorporated into the meatballs to give a, a nice background taste. And we don't need any salt for the recipe because that naturally contributes some of the salt as well. Brilliant, okay. So let's get started. Um, so what do we need to do? Okay, okay, to begin with, yeah, you might like to grab your mincing bowl. Sure. We're gonna pop the mince in. Okay, so we're putting all we'll of that? We'll put all of that in. That's that um, 600 grams sure. roughly there. So let's put that across there. We also need to pop the egg in as well, so you might like to um, to give that a, min a, wi a whisk. So we're just going to be whisking an egg here as well, mm -hmm. so just a light whisk, I appreciate. Yeah, just, uh, just, just a little. We'll actually, you'll um, be having some fun mixing that through the mince in a second. Oh, so really? just enough to get it nicely combined. Oh, and okay. that can go in almost, uh, about half of the egg there would be yep. great. Okay, sure. So, and yeah. that's going to bind the um, meatballs once we... Um, once we mix them all up into okay. the balls themselves. Sure, let's put a bit there. So now about half a cup of the, the rice that's there, so maybe about a third of what's there. A little bit more. Just a bit more. That'd be great. So that's just been cooked till it's, it's just tender. And um, probably a fair handful of the cheese that's there, that, that is about, going to be about half a cup. Okay, so just a little, little bit, bit more than And a fraction more. Okay, sure. Now, if you'd also like to, um, with the um, garlic, mm -hmm. infused olive oil, if yep. you'd like to kind of give two glugs, it's, two it's glugs. quite a, a strong um, a garlic flavour. So it's going to be about two teaspoons worth we're going to end up using. It smells so, great too. Yeah, it really... That's uh, probably that's good. Enough. Yeah, okay. that's great. Brilliant. A little shake of, of the cayenne pepper, as hot as you like it. Um, you can get I mild cayenne. I like things cayenne. very hot in the kitchen, <laughs> Sue. So, so um, yeah, about half a teaspoon, quarter to half a teaspoon is good. Tell me that's when. That's perfect. Brilliant. Uh, crack of pepper if you like. Oh, sure. There if it wants go. to crack it's for cracking, us. It's cracking. It's cracking. Perfect. This recipe is just super duper easy. It's a twist on, on regular meatballs. I really like the flavour of the parmesan cheese in there. Mm -hmm. And of course the herbs. So if you just want to grab a, a few tablespoons of, um, of basil, although I, I suggest about um, two or, or three tablespoons in the actual mix. Yep. You can use it according to your own taste Tests. preferences okay. as well. If you'd like yeah. to use any other herbs, you can. You can use some parsley in there if you like. But, okay. um, and, and also some chives, um, chives. as well. That would Brilliant. also be low for that. So, is that it? Are we ready to start mixing? You are ready to go. We've got all the ingredients in. So if you're happy okay. to, um, to, to go for it, mixing it all through so it's well combined. Oh, this is the fun bit. It is indeed. Now, we've got some extra rice cooked there. So if that um, egg, depending on the size of eggs that are used, sometimes mm -hmm. it, the mixture can be a bit wet. We don't want it terribly wet. Mm -hmm. We want the egg to be um, there enough to, to keep it soft enough and, mm -hmm. and bound enough for when we cook it. And that's looking great, actually. So that consistency is quite that good. That is spot on. And really, um, from here, the job's nice and simple. We just so need you to make some sort of golf ball-sized meatballs. So that's okay? Yeah. I'm not a golf player, so... <laughs> That will be absolutely fine. Brilliant. Yes. Now, Sue, you've been, you've pretty much come up with this whole low FODMAP diet thing. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about it? Because this is actually quite a very interesting sort of piece or bit of 
you know, some research and, and a diet that you've actually come up with. Can you tell us a bit more about it? it, it it's exciting times. Um, this, this particular diet, the, the low FODMAP diet, mm. so FODMAPs are particular molecules that are, are found in foods that can actually trigger symptoms of, of irritable bowel syndrome. Okay. So uncomfortable feelings like bloating and wind and um, abdominal pain and changes in bowel habits, might be diarrhoea or constipation, combination of both. So these symptoms previously were, were pretty hard to manage and really we, we, we sort of struggled for a, um, a therapy that worked. But the low FODMAP diet is now scientifically proven, it's used around the world and, um, and I, I'm really thrilled that, that the research that I did and I, I actually created it in my private practice in 1999, I was really troubled by why it was that um, people had problems with wheat if they didn't have celiac disease. Now, I have celiac disease, so yep. I need a, a gluten-free diet. Yep. But gluten-free isn't the answer for everyone with those symptoms. Okay. It's not if people don't have celiac disease. Uh, I was looking for what else it could be that were in foods that were triggers. And so I, I looked in all the medical research books and papers and mm -hmm. discovered that um, that there was this molecule called fructans, it's in wheat, and I thought maybe fructans, which are long chains of... So fructans, not fructose, fructans. Well, fructans is actually relative to fructose, oh, really? because what fructans is, is a chain of lots of individual fructose sugars oh, joined okay. together. So yeah. if it's long chain, it's called fructans. And yeah, you, you mentioned fructose. Fructose is another player in the FODMAP story. So as I mentioned, FODMAPs are sugars that uh, can trigger symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome. There's actually six FODMAPs, one is fructans, mm -hmm. the long chain one. Yep. One is fructose, which is a single sugar, and it's often found in fruits and honey. Another member of the FODMAP family yep. is lactose, and that's the sugar that's found in um, milk. Yeah. But this is actually lactose-free because cheeses, uh, hard cheeses, actually, although they started from milk, are lactose-free. Then we have something called GOS. Now, GOS is an abbreviation for a molecule that's the wind generator in things like baked beans, kidney beans, lentils. Uh, I think we all know that those foods yes. upset people with those symptoms. Been there before. <laughs> and then the final two are relatives. They're both types of polyols. Sorbitol, mannitol are examples of these that can mm. occur in foods as well. And people would recognise those because if they're used as an added ingredient, it actually has a warning on the back of a packet that says oh, okay. excess consumption yeah. may have a laxative effect. Oh, yes, I've yes. seen that later. Yes. Yep. So really, if you go back in time to 1999 when I first formed this, I really, well, I knew about the, the laxative effect statement. Mm. I knew too many baked beans could cause problems. Mm. I was aware of lactose intolerance, but the two new ones who were in, in the collection that I pieced together were the fructose and fructans. So I guess I taught it to my patients with my fingers crossed yep. and it worked. And ah. I was doing that for about four years before I then went on to do my PhD to prove it. And now I'm very pleased to say it's um, endorsed by scientists and doctors and dietitians around the world. And, and the rest is history. The rest is history. One in seven people can be better on this diet. Brilliant. Yeah. So we've rolled the meatballs. Yeah. So I guess we now have to cook those. We do. You probably make about 20 meatballs or so. So this recipe is going to serve four. Mm -hmm. And yeah, let's head over to the stove. Okay. I'm going to bring our pasta with us as well. Right. So we are going to put that. So we've got the part water boiling for the pasta. So let's just put that in there while that cooks Gluten free away. pasta does take a little less time to cook than regular pasta usually. And, oh, okay. and it's not so forgiving. If you overcook it, it can go a little bit... Um, way past al dente oh, yes. isn't good. So just a, a reminder to keep an eye on that. Ooh. Yes, I've been there before in my pre-apprenticeship <laughs> days. And chef wasn't too happy with the overcooked pasta. No, so what we're going to do good. is we're going to add a little bit more of this olive oil, garlic infused olive oil. Yeah, so you could use regular olive oil if you like, but the focus of this recipe is indeed that it's low FODMAP. So getting the garlic flavour is fine, but just not actually using garlic or onion itself in the actual cooking, because garlic and onion are really high in FODMAPs. Oh, so, so use infused the infused is good, but to get the, actual, the flavour. Yeah. Yep, yep, get the flavour, you just don't get the get the grief. <laughs> yeah, well, good, I'm glad you told me that. Now, these balls should um, sit together quite nicely with the egg, and, mm -hmm. and we've seen that consistency is great. So we're just going to keep an eye on them, and if you'd like to just turn them as, as sure. we go, browning on all sides. Mm -hmm and then cooking them through till they're, um, they're cooked through. So what we're trying to do is we're just pretty much trying to brown these, these meatballs. And really all meats, as long as it's um, fresh meat, not processed, all meats are not only gluten-free, but they're low FODMAP. So mm. all those mint styles that we spoke about before, the cheese is lactose-free, um, yes. regular milk and yogurt contains mm -hmm. lactose, but the cheese is lactose-free. Yep. 
You haven't used any onion or garlic, but no one will notice the difference. This is so flavorful. Instead of doing that regular chop up the yep. onion and put it in the mince mix, yep. um, you don't need it, and it will be kind on the on the tummy. So um, you can still get all those those great flavors without actually using the ingredients, and that's where the herbs also play a role too. And now we just need to add the, the sauce. So this okay. is um, in particular a low FODMAP pasta sauce. Totally flavoursome, there's lots of herbs in there already. If you just want to pour that over. Sure, just over the top. Yep, that's right. And simmer that with the meatballs. So how long are we actually simmering this for? Only for about two or three minutes, over medium heat. Okay, just turn okay. this and you know, a plain tomato puree could mm -hmm. also work, um, but there's more and more manufacturers recognizing the needs for sure. people who are on a low FODMAP diet. We've, mm -hmm. we've seen the growth of, of gluten-free over the years, and uh, I predict that the low FODMAP diet will, will be the, the new uh, emerging food trend with many companies already looking to produce low FODMAP foods. Oh, great. So that's pretty close to being done. We really just need to heat the sauce. Now we just need to strain the pasta and then we'll serve the meatballs on top. Okay, let's do that. Okay, if you want to serve it up on, on the gluten-free pasta, however hungry you are. So we get, so we've got the pasta down there, so we'll let's just put about maybe maybe four meatballs, depending mm -hmm. I guess how hungry you really are. Indeed. Now Sue, I've got a question for you. Mm -hmm. How do you actually know if you if you actually have FODMAP or you're, you're intolerant or what, what have you? Yeah, great question. Anyone that has those symptoms that I, I spoke about earlier shouldn't self-diagnose. It's really important to go to the doctor and be investigated um, absolutely for celiac disease. Celiac disease can have the same symptoms. So doctors need to investigate you for that before you change your diet. Don't mm -hmm. drop weed out of the diet. Yep. And if you're not celiac, it's quite possible that you, you have FODMAP issues because you might have irritable bowel syndrome. Your doctor's the best one to guide you and then you chat with a dietitian to make sure you're taught the right diet for the right diagnosis. Brilliant, so the moral of the story is don't self-diagnose. Don't self-diagnose. I've done that a few times <laughs> in my life. Uh, so in terms of what do we need to do? Anything Let's pretty else? it up. Lovely. A Mediterranean feel about things. <laughs> and dinner's done. Brilliant. I really hope you enjoy that. So there we have it. Penny meatballs a la Sue Shepherd. Sue, thanks for coming to the kitchen. Thanks for having me, Chef. Oh, I'm not a chef. For more information on Dr. Sue Shepherd's research and the low FODMAP diet, visit FODMAP.com. A full copy of the meatball and penne recipe is available in the About section below. Please subscribe to Kitchen Academic for more great recipes.